Okay, our next speaker, as most referred to, is Ben Handel, and he will talk about, um, from Berkeley, and he will talk about healthcare decisions in the information age. Thank you very much, Christian. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about the empirical uh, healthcare economics agenda uh, at MSR. I'm going to focus on one underlying theme from this agenda that ties together several different projects that are ongoing here that we're working on. This theme is how do individuals interacting with the medical with a med medical care sector make important decisions as a function of one, the information that they have available when those decisions when those decisions are made. And two, the incentives that they face at the time they're making those decisions. And those incentives can be either financial or non-financial. Uh, there's, there's substantial room for progress on both of these dimensions uh, in the healthcare sector. And that's highlighted uh, to some extent by the fact that the effective use of IT in healthcare uh, still, I think, lags quite far behind the effective use of IT in other important sectors in the economy. So uh, a simple way to get a sense uh, for how both information and incentives impact uh, medical, medical care delivery is to think about a typical uh, interaction between uh, patients and providers in the medical, medical setting, or to think about several aspects of this interaction. So from the patient perspective, this begins even, even before they actually go to receive medical care. So if you're a patient, uh, in the current environment, and you're going to look for a physician that you're going to visit for the first time, in almost all cases, you're going to have very limited information on the past performance and the past quality uh, performance of that physician. And that's going to make it difficult for you to find a really good match for a physician for whatever your specific case is. Uh, in, in many other product sectors in, in the economy as well, it's, it's important to point out that these kind of quality signals are pervasive. Um, and many of you are familiar with those, and I'm sure some of the other talks cover those. So in addition, individuals uh, have, on top of these medical delivery issues, individuals also have the difficult task of choosing an insurance plan um, and in the process determining how that plan functions and how that plan is going to pay for their medical bills. Um, on the provider side, I think things are actually, these information and incentive issues are just as, just as bad and maybe even worse to some extent. So um, when a patient visits a physician for the first time, uh, that physician has very limited information in most cases on, uh, on a patient's past medical history and past medical treatment, which makes it difficult for them to provide high quality treatment uh, for that patient. Uh, in addition, more broadly, physicians have limited information on the quality of their own performance uh, and very limited information on the quality of the performance of their peers. And that's valuable information that they could use uh, as feedback to help them improve their medical practices. Finally, on the incentive side, even if all of this information is available, physicians are predominantly paid now using fee-for-service fee -for -service methods which means they get paid more to do more. Um, and if that incentive mechanism implies uh, that physician incentives aren't aligned, with, aren't aligned with social goals for providing quality uh, medical care, then those incentives kind of make, it, make even the best information not, uh, not particularly useful. So um, I'm going to talk about two distinct sets of, of projects, even though these projects actu actually interact with one another. The first one is going to be uh, incentives and information for consumers, so consumers of medical care. Um, there's, been, there's been a substantial amount of prior work that studies uh, the existence of and implications of complexity in health insurance choice. Uh, for example, my recent research shows that consumers have very high switching costs. Uh, when they're choosing among health insurance plan options. What that implies is that even if consumers are making good initial insurance choices, as the insurance choice environment that they face changes over time, 
consumers may not adjust, especially in environments with a passive default option into their previously chosen plan. And this leads to uh, a sub sub potentially substantial mismatch between consumers and the health plan that they're in. Um, this, has, this has clear implications for cons consumer well-being as well as product availability uh, in insurance markets. So in ongoing research at MSR, we're using large individual uh, data sets that have both detailed demographic information, detailed medical claims information, detailed information on social networks um, to dig deeper into these choice issues um, with, with the purpose of kind of disentangling some of the micro foundations that lead to these choice adequacy issues. T in, together with these large individual level data sets, we're also layering on top field experiments that randomly allocate consumers into different choice environments. So as an example, we're looking um, we're currently working on an intervention that provides targeted information to consumers uh, that may be individual specific information that helps them choose a health plan from a complicated menu of health plans. Um, in addition, we're looking at smart default options or targeted default options, uh, as well as providing information to social networks instead of to individuals to assess how communication channels um, impact these choice uh, issues. On the, on the provider side, uh, there's multiple information dimensions that um, could be improved in order to enhance uh, quality of medical care delivery. So um, patient, I've already talked about patient information at the time that medical care is delivered. Um, in addition to relative performance and personal performance information for providers, how that information is displayed, as Motion pointed out, is a very crucial component of whether that information is effective. On the incentive side, most physicians are uh, paid fee for service right now, uh, as I mentioned, but there's other uh, payment environments that are currently being studied. Uh, one of these is pay for process or pay for quality, which is where physicians are provided financial bonuses um, if they meet certain quality or process targets. Um, another is capitated payment, where physicians receive lump sum payments for a given individual case and bear the marginal cost uh, of incremental treatments given to that patient. Shared savings is another uh, mechanism that where groups of physicians um, are rewarded based on the quality and process uh, metrics for, for group treatment. And one of the really important points that I want to take away from this is that the incentives and the information here really interact with one another in a way that's crucial to the effectiveness of both, of both kinds of policies. So um, for example, if you provide physicians this lump sum capitated payment, but you don't effectively risk adjust on the information side, then physicians will have the incentive to discharge or get rid of the sickest patients that they could treat, um, which may be actually very, which may make things worse off than the status quo. And we're studying um, these kind of research questions uh, in the context of a large insurance environment uh, where they're allowing us to use their uh, network essentially as a laboratory to test different incentive and information environments. And we're looking at a variety of field interventions there to test that. So to sum up, I think that the interaction between all of these different information and incentive components um, it, it's really crucial to investigate the interaction of these things as well as each, each different aspect on its own. And the feedback with technology goes both ways. So um, better technology that can provide better information impacts uh, the quality of care and the way doctors respond to incentives. But at the same time, the financial incentives that are in place really play a prominent role in determining which specific technologies uh, doctors take up as well and respond to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. I think we have time for one question. So is there any option which is sort of uh, better than just having a much simpler plan that people can understand on their own. Are we really going to throw a lot of information at them and a computer to make them understand which choice they should make? 
So I would rephrase the question. I mean, I, I guess I would, I would state the question as instead of kind of bombarding consumers with more information, is it better to offer simpler insurance plans? Um, and I, I, I really think that it, it go. I mean, you, you want to really change the margin on both dimensions here. So um, for example, in the recently passed uh, Affordable Care Act, one of the, uh, one of the policies that's going to be implemented for health insurance exchanges um, requires all insurance plans offered through the exchanges to provide consumers with a simple uh, standardized benefit design that I think is no more than three pages in length. So the purpose of that is specifically to kind of simplify the information. And, and I view simplification as an important part of information provision. Um, in terms of actually simplifying the insurance contracts to the extent that a consumer could really kind of get into it and understand it for like, like on, on their own, I think that would be very, very difficult. OK, thank you, Ben. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker.